Hello, Levy here, and welcome to my third and final installment covering the Cooler Master Summer Summit of 2021. First video was covering the cases and coolers, second one was peripherals and power supply units, and this one is covering everything I haven't covered um, in those last videos. And this will just round off absolutely all of the stuff that they're... Um, revealing I guess they're not launching it but they're revealing it uh, this has got a little bit more information on pricing there's pricing information in this one we're going to be covering chairs desks uh, a little bit of streaming equipment uh, some really interesting chair stuff actually and then there's this orb thing which is a bit funky so we'll get to that towards the end we'll cover the chairs first as always if you want to check out uh, anything in particular there are timestamps and chapters in the video description if you want to check out all the other stuff then please use the chapters over there. So let's start off with the chairs. Kicking things off with the Caliber R1S, there are a few different color options here. So you've got the Cooler Master Camo, Dark Knight Camo, Rose White, and Rose Gray. Now this is a very sort of typical racer kind of gamer chair in terms of well, visually anyway in the way it's laid out. Uh, you've got premium comfort with stylish design. It, there's some marketing fluff to get through here. Breathable material, I'm eh, relatively skeptical about that. Uh, it's PU, so it's PU. Um, it's poly polyurethane leather, so it's a, it's a fake leather, and yeah, it's not amazingly breathable, that stuff, so take that with a pinch of salt. Uh, you've got head and lumbar pillows, and they say it's for the best level of comfort, and personally, I don't find pillows to be the most effective ways of, uh, of sort of um, controlling your lumbar support, because they're a little bit too aggressive. Normally, they're quite um, large, quite deep, so they kind of push your lumbar, uh, your lower back, out a bit too far. So, as far as I'm concerned, not the comfiest from my perspective. But yeah, they've got armrests, that it, the were there 1D armrests, so it's just height adjustment, but for the rose white, apparently, you've got two-dimensional um, rotation. I think it's rotation and height adjust is for the rose white one. And yeah, apart from that, everything is pretty much everything you'd expect from a chair, and it'll be available, and it is available now, sorry, for $249 to $279, depending on which one you go for. I can imagine the rose white with that extra degree of uh, armrest rotation or movement not quite sure if it's rotation will be the more expensive one moving on to the caliber r2c this has got a similar style and shape in terms of the racer gamer kind of shape of chair but it's a little bit more toned down with sort of gray beige ish colors so maybe more suited to a gamer slash home office environment it has their cool in technology so apparently you can knock one or two degrees off the temperature of I guess compared to a normal chair just with this material it looks like it's it has jade powder particles in the yarn so apparently that's doing something to reduce the temperature over one or two degrees and uh, if you're anyone that keeps an eye like I do on the temperature of my room one or two degrees is a big deal so hopefully when the reviews come out for that that can be confirmed hopefully we'll see uh, superior fabric durability all the other sort of stuff and you've got comfortable works ergonomic workstation stuff the 2d arm rests they're up and down and they rotate so I think that's the same then for the previous the rose the rose white chair from the previous the uh, r1s uh, apart from that the surface material is eco-friendly fabric apparently non-toxic polyester and everything else is as you'd expect backrest is cut foam and the seat is cold molded foam if you're interested in that moving on to the caliber r2 S, R2S K-A-N, or, well, Kana, on their um, press briefing PDF, they lopped off the A at the end, so it's the Kana, K-A-N-A, -A, short for Kanagawa, Kan Kanagawa? Probably making a hash of that. This was the winning design of the Make Your Own Make Your Caliber Design Contest, inspired by the Great Wave woodblock print, the Kanagawa Kanagawa caliber is a stunning statement performance of the yeah, it doesn't say um which what the entry was or anything more on the entry, but that was the winning one. Um it's made of premium polyurethane leather, so fake leather, polyurethane material. Uh it has 2D armrests so up, down, rotate, and you've got pillows for lumbar and head support. So pretty similar to the R1S. This is the R2S, I guess. So that's where that comes from. Next up is the Caliber X1C. Very similar to the Caliber R2C here, just slightly different design. Uh, they're both lumped in actually 
with the same sort of price bracket from $319 to $399 from September 1st, 2021. So coming up in the next few months. Um, it's got the same cooling technology, jade powder, particles in the yarn kind of thing. Only this one has 40 armrests. So you've got the extra degrees of shifting them out, rotation, forward, backwards, up and down. So yeah, it's pretty much uh, just a slight upgrade from the from the r2c um and just a slightly different design as well similar color scheme so yeah not much more to say apart from that and finally in terms of the chairs we have well apart from the crazy chair we have the hybrid one now this has a mesh backrest i'm couldn't find a huge amount about this one. Just double check to see if I hadn't missed much. Uh, there's not a huge amount of information on this one. Uh, there's mesh back rest. You've got adjustable lumbar support and head rest, which looks like it's not the pillows and stuff. It's more of a structured lumbar support, which I think looks a lot better and should support your back in a much more appropriate way. You've got 4D arm rest, so the full rotation, left, right, shuffling, forward and back, strafing forward, first left and right. 4D arm rest, so you've got the shuffling forwards, left, right, up, down and rotate left and right and apparently it's just shy of $500, $499 uh, coming out in Q4 of 2021 so looks interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if there's lighting at the top of that headrest. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. Hopefully not because I'm not a massive fan of just throwing lights on stuff especially when you're probably not going to appreciate it much when you're going to sit in it and face forward whenever you use it and you probably won't even look at it when you're not using it. So it seems like a bit of a waste to me. Speaking of lighting, moving on to desks. There is another chair coming up in a second, but that's a weird one. It's not really a, you know, a desk chair. Moving on to desks, there really isn't a lot of information about these ones, and what is available is very mixed. It, I can't, I'm trying to divulge what parts of what they're saying relates to what desk. So we've got three desks. You've got the GD160, the GD120 ARGB, and the GD160 ARGB. So it looks like the GD160 has, is, is it's a large one, 160 centimeters wide, I assume. Uh, it has some bits, some sort of bevel bits or some bits that poke out on the sides. There's really not a lot to go on here. It has a surface which is waterproof and it appears you won't need like a desk mat to go on there if that's your sort of thing. Uh, the GD120, 120 centimeters wide, I assume, uh, has RGB lighting to the back and the front, so a strip to the back and the front. Uh, it has some sort of cable management towards the back. Uh, you've got um, cable management trays uh, underneath towards the back, so very standard. And the GD160 RGB is basically the same, only it's 160 centimeters wide i assume based on the name those are very standard measurements for desks so yeah the it, it, i think the gd120 and gd160 argbs are motorized and the gd160 isn't uh, in terms of pricing and availability they're going to be out on october 1st 2021 and the exact sentence they have for it is the GD160 ARGB, GD120 ARGB, and GD160 will be available for $349, $379, and $899 in October 1st, 2021. Which that to me sounds like the GD160 is gonna, GD160 ARGB is gonna be $349, which I highly doubt, it seems like the most expensive one. The GD120 ARGB is gonna be $379 only, which is more expensive, but it's definitely should be smaller, which makes no sense, and then the GD160 is $899. Uh, I, I have a feeling that's all completely backwards. Generally, when you write a sentence like that out, it's respective of the order, so, I have no idea. I assume the order is going to be the GD160 will be the cheapest at 349 and then it'll be 379 for the GD120 and 899 for the... I'm really confused about that. I have no idea what's going on there. Um, a, a lot of this in terms of the information they provided, some of it, on the whole, it's, it's pretty good, but some of it's scatterbrained and you really can't quite tell what it all means. Anyway, let's move on to monitors. Looks like we've got four monitors launching in the near future. So it's the GM227 CFX, GM34CWQ, GM27 FQS, and GM GM32 FQ. I get very tongue-tied when talking about like letters and numbers and reading those out. 
very difficult. It takes me a lot of time sometimes on takes to get through the uh, testing narration part. Anyway, so uh, the starting off the first one, then the GM27 27 CFX. It's a 1500 radius curved monitor, uh, 16 by 9 ratio, 27 inches. It's a VA 8-bit panel, CSOT, if that means anything to you. I haven't looked up what that is, but I know what VA uh, is. Um, Quantum Dot, yes. Full HD, 1920 by 1080, so it not high spec in that regard and for a 27 inch monitor that's really pushing the limit of 1080p realistically but it is a 240 hertz monitor so that's where it makes up for it 300 nits brightness which is relatively standard uh dci p3 90 percent coverage uh color gamut coverage uh inputs and outputs you've got one display port connection um hdmi 2.0 and two speaker connect 2w times two Speaker 2W times 2. I'm not 100% sure what that means. Anyway, um, adaptive sync for instead of so free sync is adaptive sync, one millisecond response time, and it's uh, you've got a vase amount, a 100 by 100 uh, millimeter vase amount. So that's that one covered. Next up is the GM34. Oh, yeah, price on that. 350 so a, a 1920 by 1080 panel 240 hertz for 349 dollars so make that what you will seems okay next up the gm34 cwq this one's a 1500r radius as the previous one 21 by, by 9 aspect ratio and a 34 inch uh, monitor. It's a VA 8-bit panel as the previous. The panel is 3440 by 1440 and as the ultra-wide uh, aspect ratio. 350 nits, so a touch brighter than previous, which is very reasonable for a monitor. DCI-P3 90% coverage, which is just reading specs out here for you now at the moment. Uh, display port connection, HDMI 2.0 connection, and then the speaker. I th they mean 5 watt? F... -f 5W times 2? 5 what? I no idea. Adaptive sync, 1 millisecond response time, and a 100 by 100 millimeter vase amount. Next up, the GM27 FQS. This is available for $449, so keep that in mind. This is an 8 bit IPS monitor. It's 2K, so 2560 by 1440. 27 inch 16 by 9 aspect ratio and it's a flat screen as well 300 nit brightness uh, 165 hertz so uh, you've got the kind of the best of both worlds there in terms of the um the re resolution and the refresh rate so that's nice to see dci p3 90 color gamut coverage and then same connectivity as the previous so display port one display port connection and two hdmi 2.0 connections you've also got uh, type b and type a connections too type b i've not heard of type b unless they're talking about usb type b no idea, not sure there. Free sync, a premium G sync compatible ready, one millisecond response time, lighting, purple lighting, the best lighting color, and 100 by 100 millimeter vase amount. And last but not least is the $499 GM32FQ. Flat screen, 16 by 9, 32 inches, IPS 8 bit screen, um, 2K QHD, so tw uh, 2560 by 1440. 165 hertz, so again, nice, nice meet in the middle of refresh rate and, well, it's quite high refresh rate, and getting the resolution, uh, and since it's a 32-inch screen, it's going to make uh, some good use of that bump in resolution. It kind of needs it at that size. 400 nit peak brightness, which is good, which is better than sort of your 300 kind of average. Uh, DCI P3, 95% color gamut coverage, a little bit better than the previous. Uh, that doesn't explain color accuracy, just color coverage. Um, display port, one display port connection, two HDMI connections, type C, type B, and type A connections too. I have to see what that type B is about. Am I at the loop on that? I'm not sure. Am I the only one? Anyway, one millisecond response time, purple lighting, and a 100 by 100 millimeter vase amount. Whew. $500 for that one. So now we've got off that, let's get into the the few couple bits of crazy stuff. So here we have the Motion One. It's a D-Box collaboration. D-Box make, uh, they make 
a sort of simulator equipment kind of stuff, um, sort of motion, force feedback or motion simulator equipment for chairs and rigs and that kind of stuff. You might have seen um, some racing rigs, things like that. I think they do stuff similar to that. So this is reading from the horse's mouth here, this is D-Box's pioneering foray into the gaming world can be seen in their world-class racing simulators and the first haptic system to be licensed by the FIA. And this is in a gaming office kind of chair. Now that is a rather large unit beneath that chair, so I uh, don't expect this to be a regular um, sit at your desk, do office work, and I think this is going to be more exclusive to playing games perhaps rather than because I, I don't know about you but I like to put my feet on the on the um, spokes of the chair where the wheels are uh, and that is just going to get in the way so there's not a huge amount to, to, to see on this one you've got uh, adjustable lumbar and, and, and head support uh, and it's going to cost you uh, $1,999 to $2,299 available in Q1 of 2022. So, yeah, it's, I guess, wait for reviews. See what it's like. I doubt many of us are going to be looking to get that. And speaking of things we're not likely, any of us are likely to really get, this is the Orb X. Now, this is the weird cockpit thing I was talking about earlier. And it's not really a cockpit thing. It's just kind of has a, a styling like that. Let's go through all the talking points and you can check out the fancy pictures. So, fully automated motorized canopy. So that thing, motorized, goes up and down. Very fancy. Uh, adjustable seat, you'd hope so. Um, it has a, you can go for a single 34 inch screen or you can put up to, in up to three 27 inch screens for that panoramic view. It's got a cloth top surface. I assume that'll be waterproof as well. So you shouldn't have to have, you shouldn't have to buy in addition to that an extra covering for it. Uh, it's got built-in wireless for phone charging, a USB hub, it has all the RGB, 16 million RGB apparently, which was uh, specifically from their uh, their PDF files. Slightly broken English here and there. Um, it's got a rear PC compartment. And one thing I found funny about this in their PDF is they have a rear PC compartment. And for something that will be extremely expensive, they have nearly one of their cheapest, it might even be their cheapest case that they sell m close to, uh, which is the Q300L. And this is also one of the hottest cases that they have. So I probably would not lock that in a compartment. Um, I would not put a system in that and then lock it in a compartment inside this thing. It just seems ironic that they it just seems like they're two opposite ends of the scale, really. And they've got some really cool stuff, really cool um, small form factor PC stuff, like the um, NR200P Max. Put that in there, you know, really, really sell it up. Um, anyway, I shouldn't be telling <laughs> companies to really sell up their stuff realistically. Anyway, uh, it's got 2.1 uh, stereo sound system and it has adaptive audio modes, uh, control modes with a little... Um, uh, controller on the left side, I think, uh, of the armrest. So yeah, completely nuts, um, just out of this world, insane. I know I will probably likely never experience this or probably anything like this, to be honest, uh, unless I get very lucky or I just go to some sort of experience to check one out myself. I think that's probably for most of us. And last but certainly not least, uh, one of the one of the coolest pro bits of kit that they're launching and it's kind of like semi-pro stuff uh this is the stream engine engine spelt in the most obnoxious way of course as um any product name generally gets you know named these days horrible it i i made a point about this to Ames the other day and i've made it a few times is that lots of companies bring out products with really funky names and i don't know if it's just me but it kind of makes you feel it gives you like a feeling of dyslexia to a certain degree because it forces you to contort your your way of reading things into a really different way. I haven't been diagnosed with dyslexia, but I mistake words all the time when reading them and it's clear as day, but I'll still read it wrong. So I assume there's a little bit of that in me somewhere. Anyway, let's get into the details. All in one integration, one of their points, you can do live streaming, content mixing and switching, stream capturing and editing with this piece of kit. So a lot of customizability in this unit. 
I think this is going to be a really, really popular product uh, of theirs. Uh, you can live stream content to two simultaneous CN CDN, so uh, content destination networks. I believe that's what it stood for. I checked it before uh, before I did this. They have an integrated iPad app. Uh, I'd hope they'd have an Android one as well. I always hate to see it when they lock it off to one system. That just annoying. Anyway, apparently it makes image and overlay editing, program previewing, and scene transitioning quick. I can imagine it's kind of like the quick stuff from like an OBS kind of thing they'll have on there with a few extra dials tweaked in for stuff like live streaming and like content mixing and stuff like that. Uh, probably for switching as well. Um, and then they've got preset storyboard scenes, up to eight available preset scenes for a customized layout, um, broadcast your personal content. So yeah, it, it really just seems like an all-in-one unit with lots of functionality, compact and portable is uh, the, the last talking point. Um, going over the specifications, really the raw stuff, uh, it's a, an 11 by 7.5 by 3.8 inch unit. So that's really quite, quite sort of mid-sized, quite stout though, quite mid-sized, I'd say. Input-wise, you've got a 4K HDMI in and a 1080p HDMI in, a couple of those, uh, two HDMI outputs, uh, a gigabit LAN port, RCA line in, and a 6.3 millimeter TRS mic jack, 3.0 millimeter uh, line out, which should be for monitoring, I assume, USB 2.0 and USB 3.2 ports, and then you've got OS support for iPad Pro with iOS 11, and then there's some other integration stuff like first gen and second gen iPad Pros, and then the iPad fifth gen or later, iPad Air, and the iPad Mini, so... It's all iPad. It weighs what just shy of 1.2 or 1.9 kilos, and the warranty you have a warranty of X years. So uh, I guess just make it up and hope for the best. Or it's 10 years. It could be maybe they maybe they're really iPad, really Apple at the moment, and it's X for 10. Uh, I doubt it. I presume they just forgot to fill that one in. Um, and that they are trying to be smart. Anyway, that's it for this one. Uh, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on there. Some interesting chair stuff going on uh, in the regular chair stuff. I do think the pricing is actually pretty reasonable. You've got $250 for some of those chairs, which is pretty nice. Um, although you don't have, like, the... the um, I would say the pref preferable lumbar support, so they have pillows and stuff. But you know what? That is well below what a lot of chairs are around, so... You know, I think that's pretty reasonable. Uh, and then there's some crazy table stuff and, yeah, nuts. Thanks for checking this one out. If you want to check out the other coverage, cases and coolers, uh, power, supplies and power supplies and peripherals, please check the cards in the top right. Uh, and I will catch you in whatever the next one is. That's my end of this coverage for the Cooler Master Summer Summit of 2021. I know this was a really long one to finish off, but there's a lot of quirky stuff and a lot of specky stuff to sort out. So... Thanks for checking this one out, guys. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.